these things that are on our hearts, sharing it with you, and we're digging it. Let's talk about movie-making practicalities while we still have time. Isn't it impractical to think that you can produce a feature film? Mm. What a crazy notion. Yeah. You know? But um, as impractical as it is, maybe the Lord's put it on your heart. But I'm a, I've always been an advocate for the underdog. I always wanted to see Rocky win. Yeah. You know, you want to see Superman save Lois, you know. Uh, I just think that in 2008, it, uh, there's so many more opportunities to dream big and to actually get those... I mean, you don't need the budget that you used to need to right. develop a movie. And you can do one heck of a darn amazing movie uh, yeah. with prosumer software these days. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just want, you know, I mean, you've got some huge visions for some feature films. Why don't you talk about that? Okay. Um, well, uh like the Truth Trilogy is, is just the idea that at the beginning, middle, and end of the tribulation period, we, we see this cross-section of, uh, of social interaction between, the, at the beginning, a group of, of youth in Jerusalem, a Korean uh, nuclear physicist guy, quantum physics, uh, uh, parallel universe folding thing, I don't know, <laughs> propulsion technique. Um, and so they travel out to the edge of the known universe as these scientists that are mostly atheistic have an encounter with God and come back at the, uh, after the middle of the tribulation period when the Antichrist has said, uh, reared his ugly head in uh, the abomination of desolation prophesied by Jesus, which is the moment in time when he shows up in Jerusalem in the temple and says, I'm the one, which is ludicrous. But any man other than Jesus would ever say that. But he does, and these scientists come back on fire for God now, and they prophesy and preach, and the whole world's wanting to know what they have to say because they spent a lot of money to them out there. You know? um, so that's the end of the second movie, probably the end of their lives as well. The third movie is the son of this uh, physicist who's been well-trained in terms of what uh, the future has in store, and so the beginning of the movie is the last 15 minutes of the battle of Armageddon and the color, you know, scenario. With this kid coming out of, of his cave, you know, after it's all, all the dust has settled, and looking at this, this wasteland that we've made for ourselves, pretty much. And then that movie ends with him talking with Jesus, who has come back to earth and is reigning in Jerusalem. And he's just hanging out with Jesus in the throne room in Jerusalem and saying, you know, what about this and what about that? And asks all these questions to the king of the universe. So, Are you um, going to be there in the throne room at the end of the millennium? Where do you plan to be when Christ comes with his terrible sword to judge the living and the dead? Pretty powerful question to ask yourself. Yeah. I mean to break your flow? No, man, that's, that's the whole idea is these movies, if they don't move someone to... Uh, to the king, then they're useless. Um, so yeah, if I if that story inspires you to ask that question, then I'm glad you asked it. Like people, it's, it's really important for us to know. You know, where do we stand? Do we stand with the king of Israel and his Jerusalem, or do we stand with the Antichrist and his one world order that's not so orderly? You know, um, you know that the United Nations is run by Arab nations. Anyways, that's all another. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then that, that's about it. I'd like to put those movies together. The, the first one is going to be fairly inexpensive, hopefully, and, and move on from there. Amen. Yep. Let's talk about uh, the power and the value and the, uh, the need for prayer. Okay, so um, well, what we do at theprayroom.tv is we pray. You know, And what is prayer? Prayer is actually communing with the being who holds your atoms together. Prayer is the idea that you go to the Father of Lights, it says in, in the book of John. Um, the Father of Lights, in whom there's no variableness or shifting shadow. It's a being of light and love. It says God is love. God is spirit. Um, they that worship Him must worship in spirit and the truth. Prayer is the idea of, through Jesus Christ, the only mediator between God and man. It says um, in the book of Acts that, that um, uh, by that name, um, Jesus Christ, um, and there's no other name given among men by which we must be saved. That Jesus is uh, the totally other than God man. He's, he's completely unique. Um, there's no avatar, no spiritual guide, no teacher, 
nothing comes close to who Jesus is. Um, he's literally the creator and the savior. He's the maker and the redeemer. redeemer. He's holding your atoms together. He spoke you into existence. He wove you together in your mother's womb. And he also provided through his body the propitiation or, or sacrifice for your sins. Sally do it every day. I mean, we get together on the phone, mostly every day. Mostly. And, and we, we intercede for our families, our friends, our businesses, our churches, our cities, our country, and, and our planet. You know? And inter intercession or prayer is just the idea of, of saying, you know, I agree with you, God. You are true. You are right. And what you're going to do is going to save us. And you're doing it through me, and you will yet do it for, for me, you know. Um, so that's, that's what prayer is. For those of you out there that don't know the Lord, I want you to contemplate what Tom just said. I am sure that the Holy Spirit is supercharging this moment. And when you listen to the words of truth that Mr. Chaffer speaks, you feel it resonate in your heart. And I would encourage you to really seek your heart. And if you don't know the Savior of the world, if you don't know Jesus, I would encourage you to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Give your heart to Christ. You will not regret it. Christ is on the throne. He is real. Yeah. He is interceding for you right now yeah, on your true. behalf. He's calling you to, to, to himself. And I promise you, whatever your past, whatever you're going through, whatever trials you're in, um, you will find healing. You will find peace in Christ. And it's a really simple prayer. All you have to do is give him your heart and ask him to be Lord of your life in your own words. And if you mean it in your heart, uh, you will be plucked out of the pit of destruction and, and into his marvel, marvelous light, written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You will be eternally saved. Uh, so I encourage you, if you don't know Jesus, just get right with him tonight and give your heart to him. and It will be the best thing you ever do. Yeah. And then contact us. Contact yeah. Mr. Chaffer. Yeah, you, YouTube it. Yeah. We're on YouTube.com slash AdamSound as well as like several other sites. But YouTube has a nice um, interface for uh, talking about what, what, what you've experienced or your thoughts. You know what I mean? Amen. Be critical, you know. We, we just love all, we're, we take all comers, you know. John 3.16. Yeah. Yeah, John 3.16 is that, that famous verse. I don't know if you've ever heard it. It's God so loved the whole planet that he gave his only begotten son that who, whosoever should believe in his son um, should not perish but have eternal life. And it's as easy as, as looking to who Jesus is Amen. and considering what he did for the whole planet and saying, that resonates with me. I say yes to that. I say yes to you, God. And, um, and living, living with that yes on yeah. I think that's all we need to say. Yeah. So um, have a great day. And God bless you. See ya.